Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're going to take a look at the Pen BBS 469. This is a super interesting fountain pen, and it is my first double sided fountain pen. So let's go ahead and get into it. Um, we'll go over what I like, I'm neutral towards what I dislike, we'll do size comparison, and then a writing sample. All right, on to the size comparison. So you can see here that it dwarfs all of these pens. This is an extremely large pen, both when capped and uncapped. Um, it, it, here it is next to the Twisby 580, the Lamy Safari, and the Pilot Metropolitan, and it's just so much larger than all of these pens. Here's an uncapped size comparison with those same pens. Again, this one's just significantly larger than any of these other pens here. Um, the nib is a number six size nib, so that doesn't really help with the size difference, at least appearance wise. And if this pen looks like it is big, that is because it is big. <laughs> All right, on to what I like about the pen. So first up is actually going to be the material. So this is available in a few different materials, but this is the first one it was released in. This is called Moon River. And this material is absolutely gorgeous. It really, really is. There's a lot of depth and chatoyance to it. You can see there's some pink in there, some white, turquoise, green, blue. It's really, really, really nice. Really, really like the material. And the center is just a completely see-through uh, clear acrylic. And the section as well is that same kind of Moon River material. Very, very nice material. Probably one of my favorites I've ever seen in a pen. And again, they do offer this in a few different materials. The different material choices lead to different prices. Um, I actually don't mind the price on this at all. It's between $40 and $60 depending on um, material and where you buy it from. I think I paid like mm, a little under $50, maybe like $48, $49, which actually is not a bad price for this. Uh, considering the material, the fact that it's double-sided, the novelty of it, you get two nibs with it. There's a lot of stuff going on here that I can definitely see um, increasing the price, so I can certainly understand that. Speaking of the nibs, those number six nibs are really, really, really um, convenient to have. So you get one that is two-tone, this one here, and then you get one that is completely silver on the other side. Now because these are number six size nibs, that means that you can swap them out with any other number six size nibs that you choose. So if there's um, another nib size that you want on the other end or something like that, you can certainly, certainly do that. Uh, keep in mind these nibs, both of these on here, are both fine. I would probably go with uh, maybe a medium or a broad and a stub. I think that would be interesting. Um, but yeah, they do both come with, uh, both ends are fine nibs. One's two-tone and one's silver. And the nibs write pretty smooth, honestly, for fine. And they are fairly fine nibs, honestly. They feel a bit to me. Um, almost like a Japanese fine, or maybe in between a Western and Japanese fine. Um, that's about the range that I'm getting from them. This one's a little bit more broad than the entirely silver one on this side. But it's not very noticeable. Because, these, uh, because this pen is two-sided, you do get two ink res reservoirs. So they, they probably could have done you know, just one solid chamber to hold more ink and have both nibs use that same color, but that would be kind of boring. So here you get two chambers that hold, um, from what I can tell, about a milliliter, between a milliliter and a milliliter and a half of ink. I don't have exact measurements, but it's a pretty good amount. Um, I've been using um, this ink in here for several days now. I've swapped out the inks in here a couple times. These two I've been using for a few days, alternating the nibs, and there's a lot of it still left because um, of the flow, which we'll get back to later. But um, the ink capacity on these are really, really nice. And one thing that is also nice, if you watched the unboxing that I did of this, you'll already know this, but there's an O-ring in here. Now, during my testing, just to make sure I could, you know, say this, I did not use any silicone grease. I still don't have any silicone grease in there. It is purely that O-ring. I don't know if you can see it too well right there. There you go. So that by itself is good enough to hold in all of this ink. And that's all you need. Um, you can certainly put silicone grease if you are a little bit paranoid about it. But I've been carrying this and using this for several weeks. 
with no leaking issues at all, which I'm very, very pleased about. So the size of this pen, as you saw in size comparison, this pen is very large. It's it's big. It's not too bad though. Um, it is. It's more long than anything. Um, the size is is nice. I will say you can't post this pen, which isn't really a downside. Um, you can't post this pen securely. You can kind of post it. Now, when you post it, it is very very long, and it looks absolutely ridiculous. I'm trying to get it in frame here. But yeah, you, you, you kind of can, and it's not very secure, but it does stay on there if you just feel like holding the world's most ridiculous fountain pen. That's always an option. Build quality of this is very, very nice as well. Um, obviously, this is uh, turned acrylic, so there's no injection molding seams or anything like that. That's on the clear and the um, Moon River parts as well. So it's very, very nice. Everything's put together very well. There are no sharp corners or anything like that, to be honest. Even the step down is rounded. Um, the cap is rounded as well on the end there. It kind of leads to a little bit of a dip, which I don't really think you can see super well. Maybe a little there. But that dip really isn't uncomfortable, and I'd rather have that dip there than have two sharp ends. So it's, it's nice, especially considering the fact that your fingers are definitely going to rest on that. You know, um, At least with mine, my thumb certainly does. No sharpness at all. Very, very pleasant. So all of this comes together into the thing that I like the most about this pen, and that is flexibility. Now, and I'm not talking about like nib flexibility, but this this pen has a lot of options. You get two nibs, you get two ink colors. You can do a lot with it. Um, it does come in a fairly affordable, you know, price range, with some interesting color choices and things like that. So I think it's a very, very compelling um, idea concept. There are a few things they can improve on, which we'll get to in a bit, but overall, it's it's a really, really nice idea. Um, the double-sided fountain pen, you, again, you get the two inks, you get the two nibs, so you can really, really, really have a lot of options, even carrying just one pen with you, and you, you can save space and, and try some new things with this kind of pen. On to our neutral towards. So first up is actually going to be the flow. The flow on both of these nibs is fairly dry. Now these nib units just unscrew, so you can just grab it and twist it to um, counterclockwise, so to your right, I guess, kind of, left, it doesn't really matter. Um, counterclockwise, and you can unscrew the nib units, put in a new, a new nib unit, or um, you may be able to pull the nib and feed out. I will say be careful doing that because the fins on this nib, although they don't look like it because I have fixed them, they did get bent. So be careful doing that. Anyway, back to what I was saying. The flow on this pen is, is somewhat dry. I'm not a huge fan of it. I really don't have any issues with either one of the nibs skipping or anything like that. You'll see that in the writing sample. But it feels like it's right there on the verge of it, and it makes me a little bit uncomfortable. Next thing in the neutral is the section. So you can see it does taper. Now, the the section's fairly small on this pen. Let me grab, so I have the Estabrook SD here, and you can see just how much thicker the section is on the SD. Um, in my opinion, it's much, much more comfortable to hold and use for long writing sessions, just because it's this is a little too narrow. Now the Estabrook SD, the section's really not big, it's probably about average, um, but because of the taper, this one just feels exceptionally small, and it's a little bit annoying. Um, it's fine for, you know, writing down quick notes or something like that, but for extended writing sessions, um, I do have some issues holding this. It's, it's not a huge deal, but it, it's a little annoying, and it kind of feeds into one of the next things I'm going to talk about. All right, on to the dislike. So the biggest thing for me are the ergonomics of this pen are awful. So the size really doesn't bother me. Um, the weight is it's fairly balanced. I didn't really talk about that, but the weight's pretty good. But when you're gripping this really narrow section, you have this really big step down as well. 
So instead of just kind of tapering down to, you know, maybe half a mil half a millimeter, it kind of goes from this big step down all the way down to this little narrow section. And it it feels like when I'm holding this pen and using it, it feels like my hand is on the verge of cramping constantly. Um, the, the weight is a bit more balanced towards the back when you're holding this pen, probably because of the cap, because the pen's perfectly even. So if you, if you uncap it on both ends, it, it alleviates a lot of that, um, that cramping feeling, at least for me, but also looks stupid and you might get ink on you. So the, the ergonomics are really, really killing it for me. That step down certainly doesn't help. And the narrow section doesn't really help either. Both of those contribute to a much less than stellar ergonomic performance. And this is one of my least favorite pens to use, like in an all-day situation at work or anything, because of those ergonomics. All right, on to the writing sample. So first up is going to be this silver nib. Again, both of these are fine nibs. This one has Colorverse Electron in it. So we have the pen BBS469. Again, these are fine nibs. And this one has Colorverse Electron, which is a really, really nice um, orange ink that I, I like quite a bit. So there really isn't any skipping. There's a few parts where the line thins out a little bit. Um, keep in mind I'm a bit heavy handed on some of these strokes so that can certainly contribute to it. But I'll show you what I mean by the, the light flow. Um, also, let's go ahead and get a reverse writing line, a normal writing line, and a line with some pressure. So you can definitely ink out or get out some more ink if you press down a little bit. Um, you're not gonna get a lot of flex, so these are steel nibs. Onto the two-tone, and I believe this is Noodler's Golden Brown. I could be wrong. Um, I had several ink samples with a similar shade in it, but I believe that's what this is. Was a bit of a skip there, but I believe that was my fault. And reverse writing line, normal, and with some pressure. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at all of this. So you can see what I meant by the um, the two tone nib, the one on the bottom being just a tad bit larger. It's not super noticeable, but it is there. And you can see that bit of a skip on the end. But especially on the electron, you can really see there's not much shading from this nib, these nibs rather, just because it doesn't put out a lot of ink. Um, that's one of the things I would definitely change about it. If ergonomics would come first, but um, you, you could certainly, you know, disassemble that nib housing unit if you're careful and widen the feed channel. Um, I just haven't messed with it because I wanted to keep it in its, you know, out of box state for this review. But I may do some modification to that in the future. On to the conclusion. So, this is a very interesting pen. Um, the idea is is kind of cool. It's been done before, don't get me wrong, but it's not been done at this price point um, or these material options or anything like that. So it's a very, very, very cool kind of concept that I think they brought to life more for fun than anything. Um, I like the Pen BBS company. They're one of the few Chinese companies doing original designs. Um, and the the build quality is there. The performance is there. There are a few tweaks I think they can make on this. Maybe include a different nib size and definitely change up the ergonomics a bit. Um, maybe kind of taper that down or, or bump up the section or both ideally. Um, because the less of a step down there is, the better it is, in my opinion, for ergonomics. But they they executed this really interesting and cool pen idea that I don't think was available at all in the entry-level market before. 
They did it at a good price. They did it with good materials. And they did it pretty well. Um, please keep in mind when you're buying this pen, if you do buy it, that you're paying for the novelty of it. You're not paying for this to be an everyday pen. And it very well could be for you. But for me, it is not. And I kind of knew that going into it. I just really wanted to review it for all of you. But please, please keep that in mind. Um, that being said, if you're looking for an everyday writer, I cannot recommend this pen just because of ergonomic reasons. Um, if you're wanting the ink capacity, go with the Twisby. If you're wanting the, you know, two different ink colors, get two Caveco Lilliputs or something like that. I don't know. But this really, in my opinion, isn't a good everyday use pen. It definitely has its flaws. But it's it's kind of a cool thing. Uh, and I think for the price, it's, you know, not that bad of a deal. Hope you all enjoyed that review. If you have any questions about this pen or any of the other pens I've taken a look at, feel free to leave a comment. And I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thanks, guys. Bye.